Alright, g'day guys. Today is a momentous occasion. I finally got the trailer registered. So I just got back from the uh, transport department uh, just a minute ago getting the, the plate and everything done. So it was an ordeal uh, <laughs> to, put it, to put it kindly, I suppose. It was, um, yeah, it was more work than I had allowed for and definitely more complex than I thought. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run through basically the whole process, what it took. So um, anyone who's building a trailer at the moment or, or doing it, I'm about to, um, this will benefit you. I wish I had a, come across something like this, yeah, either before I, probably before I started really, because it would have saved me a lot of time um, in, the, in the meantime, I suppose. Um, yeah, if you're not building a trailer, this may not be that interesting. Um, just keep watching though, hey, it's always good. So, uh, Firstly, I guess I'll, I'll go through the difference between um, ATM and GTM. These were, this was something I sort of briefly looked into, um, but I wasn't across at all, which I really should have been. So the ATM is, uh, is basically the maximum weight of the trailer on its own, which me as the manufacturer or the manufacturer would, um, would basically set. So a normal trailer that's been made by a, a company, they will say, um, lo load your trailer right up, this is as much as it can weigh. Um, but the, the ATM is, is without it um, attached to the vehicle, so just the trailer on its own. So we're talking for my trailer, everything you see here, but just sitting on the jockey wheel and not attached to the car. So that's the ATM. The GTM then is the gross trailer mass. So that is basically the same thing, but once it's attached to the vehicle. And so I'll also say the, um, yeah, the ATM is the aggregate trailer mass. So fancy words, but essentially it means the maximum load that the trailer will take, recommended by the manufacturer. Uh, that includes, yeah, well they say ma maximum weight imposed basically. So everything, when it's fully loaded, um, the most you'll put on it. And then the GTM, gross trailer mass, that's the, that's the maximum like same thing, the maximum that you can put on there and recommended, um, but when it's attached to the car. So you're losing obviously that um, percentage of ball weight. So whether it's 10 or 12% or, or whatever it is. Um, in my case, it's a bit more, it's about 15, 15%, I think. Um, so yeah, that's briefly how that works. That was a, a not a bit to get my head around, but it just it was just terms I wasn't familiar with, I suppose. Um, right, so the process, the, the reason I suppose that this was such a process was my whole plan was to keep this trailer under 750 kilos. Um, a trailer under 750 kilos doesn't need brakes. It, what I thought it didn't need a safety certificate when you register it. And it was just, it was just gonna be a lot, lot simpler basically. Every, every sort of small trailer I've had been under 750 kilos been really 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 simple really straightforward to register and deregister and insure and, and all the rest plus I wanted to keep it light obviously being a fairly small car I didn't want it to be stupidly heavy so that was the goal which when I was sort of before we went away it was all fairly stressful um, and I was trying to calculate how much everything weighed so I was I was adding up I was adding up basically and, and this is when I'm talking about weight here, that's 750, I'm talking about the ATM, so the aggregate, so um, everything essentially maximum recommended by me. So, um, yeah, calculated into that, you got your, obviously your boat, everything in your boat, the frame, the jerry cans, the tent, all that sort of stuff. That's what I was calculating and thinking, oh yeah, cool, it's going to come in about 650, 700, it'll be under that 750, which, is, which was the goal. So I went into the Department of Transport and I took in, I took in all the info I needed, filled out the paperwork, got myself a VIN. So they give you a VIN plate when it's a homemade trailer. So I had, I had that on a piece of paper. I had a blank compliance plate that I had to then engrave. Uh, then I was driving away and I was just thinking, I don't know. I think it was just a, you know clearer thought after a few, 
after a few weeks off not really thinking about it and I thought shit I'm not adding up that ATM number that I was working out of six or 650, 700 that was basically everything on top of the axle which I think in because in my background of, of doing suspension builds and that when you're calculating weight for suspension it's obviously everything above the axle but obviously for what I'm talking about here ATM uh, it needed to be everything as well so that's that was then considering two fairly big tyres on steel rims, uh, a 1500 kilo rated axle. Um, <laughs> yeah, obviously that's, there's a fair bit of weight in that in itself. So that then led me to decide rather than just guesstimating it, which I totally could have done um, at the Department of Transport, I could have just, I, I, I essentially could have just written it was under 750 and it would have been fine. They would have registered it there on the spot. Obviously that's, well, unintentionally would have been illegal. Uh, and if you did ever get pulled up and weighed at a, at a weigh bridge, you'd be, you'd be over, way over it. So, so what I did was I found a, a weigh bridge in Mackay, um, which don't exist, public weigh bridges here, by the way, if you ever come into Mackay. Where I'm from, there's a number of them. You just, oh shit. You just pay your 20 bucks or whatever and, and you weigh whatever you want. Uh, they don't have that here, so there's a, there's a bloke doing it. Um, North Queensland mobile caravan way bridge, way bridge, something like that. Basically, he's got a couple of little scales. He comes to you where you go to him. Very, very smart business. Cost me $150, which, uh, well, you got no option, so you got to pay it. He's a good dude. Yeah, nothing wrong with him. He's just making a bit of cash, doing, doing a pretty good service, really. So, um, But this is the report I got. It's going to focus. So top figure there, 427. That's the right side. Next one down is the left side. Underneath is the uh, GTM. So with the weight on the tow ball. Bottom figure there, 1,000. 1,078 is what it reads. That's um, that's the ATM. So the 1,078 is is with the tow ball on his scale as well. Yeah, so it's a fair bit over what I had, what I had allowed for, and what I was sort of aiming at. But obviously, like I said before, once you add in the axle and everything, it kind of, yeah, kind of makes sense. Uh, and mind you, that's without, that's without any another jerry can, and there's only half full tank in that boat. I think there is a bag of firewood and some other random shit, but I've got to allow for that because that's the sort of stuff we're going to be carrying uh, day to day in any case. So yeah, that was a bit of an eye opener. So we've been back and forth on the internet with TMR, which is main roads here in Queensland, which are, they've been pretty good really. Like it's, it's easy to, it's been very easy for, not me, Charlotte to message them. And they, they literally just, you text back and forth. The problem is we just, no one really seems to know with homemade stuff. It's, it's obviously not nowhere near as common and we just get different answers every single time so so what we established then yesterday this was after i'd already got the vin for the 750 was that we were going to need we were going to need to get a new vin basically fill out the form correctly saying that it was over 750 atm uh, get a safety certificate so a road weather certificate and then take it in to get registered and take it in to get registered again so i found someone this morning that would do the roadworthy and i went in and old mate said no you got to have a vin number I said, oh, okay, I've got a VIN number, but I was pretty sure it's going to need to be changed because all of the above, because it was the wrong weight and all the rest. So, which is good. I didn't pay him any money, thank God. So I went back into Department of Transport and gave them, yeah, and basically just said to old mate, I said, I've got this VIN, which was for a trailer that I thought was going to be under 750 and it wasn't. Um, he basically didn't know for a second. Then he thought, no, hang on, those VINs are registered. Those VINs are given for anything from up to four and a half tons, so under 750 up to four and a half tons, so it should be fine for this, which was good. Uh, and then I said, okay, cool, I'll go get the safety certificate. And lucky he said, no, that's you don't need to do that because it's a brand new trailer. It doesn't need a roadworthy certificate. Keep in mind, if you're doing this, this is all in Queensland, I don't know about anywhere else, but I didn't know this, the, the roadworthy guy didn't know this. It's very, very hard to figure out on the, on the internet the guys on chat, they didn't really know it either. Oh, it's bright out here. So yeah, essentially because of because it is brand new, 
all I really needed to do was have them inspect it, play it on the on the trailer and, and then send it. So yeah, basically I went and bought an engraver, filled out the um filled out the, the plate, pretty pretty dodgy if you ask me, but they're a bit harder to use than you think. Uh, and then, yeah, I didn't even have to fill a form out. So I'd started filling a form out for under 750. But yeah, when it's when it's over, they come and inspect it. They measure it, they fill it out. Super, super simple. Uh, and then you just have to stamp, can't engrave, you have to stamp the VIN into the chassis somewhere, which I've, I've done on the other side. So I had to buy a little alphabet punch thing and, and did that. So I did all that in the car park at Bunnings rather than driving all the way back out here. So, but then once I actually went to the transport department with that. It was a very, very easy process. She came out, she had a look. It was kind of when we were realized that we need, needed these clearance lights because of the weight and that. I don't know. Maybe she looked at it, but it didn't really seem like she was paying that much attention. So I reckon, um, yeah, I reckon we could have got away without doing that. Um, but yeah, after that, it was, it was very, very, very simple. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's pretty much it. Essentially, and I, I sort of knew this, but I think the, I think what I should have done straight away was get it weighed. So I knew that it was over the 750. Thought about it properly, which at the end we were rushing a lot there and, and I wasn't really thinking properly about this sort of stuff. But um, yeah, that's what I should have done was got it weighed straight away. Then I would have known. Um, and then basically gone in to get the VIN and assuming that everyone was on the same page there transport department they would have told me you don't need a safety cert just put your numbers on come back and see us and uh and we go from there so anyway i hope that helps anyone who's looking to do this or trying to do this yeah if i had have found someone share those experiences it would have would have made the process a lot a lot easier it's literally taken me nearly three days <laughs> to do it all so but yeah good news is it's finally done i've just got to bolt the plate on at uh, at some stage, which it's a it's a full size it's a full size car plate. It's got to fit here, so it's uh, it's a fair bit bigger than I allowed for. I was thinking it'd be like the one on on the other on my little boat trailer, which was only just a little plate, um, but it's not. It's full size, so uh, I'll do that at some stage. But yeah, that's probably one of the biggest. Well, one of, yeah, one of the <laughs> biggest. Um, boxes to tick, I suppose. Very mo monumentous. Momentous? Anyway. Oh, also as well, if, um, yeah, if anyone is actually building a trailer while watching this, um, just comment below because it's, yeah, it's something of, yeah, it's, it seems like a lot of people are talking about it and that. Uh, it'd be really cool to know. I want to hear, yeah, what, what you're doing. If you are building one, um, yeah, let me know if this helps because, yeah. I'm So I had just done this whole section of recording just before, but since I hadn't pressed record, so. Um, but woo, we're going fishing. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Shane did manage to get the boat in the water on his own the other day with the trailer and went for a fish, but I was working, I'm working like four days a week at the moment. So this is our first time going fishing in the boat since the boat trailer's been done um, together. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to Gra somewhere near Grass Tree Beach, which is near Serena, um, which is about 35, 40 minutes south of Mackay. Uh, chuck some crab pots in, go for a fish. Shane's just been trying to teach me how to do knots. Doing well. Trying to learn. I don't have the best fine motor skills. I don't know if you ever noticed in the videos, but if they ever look really shaky, it's because I have terrible fine motor skills. Very shaky person. Shaky jakey, Shano calls me. <laughs> Uh, like if I ever carry plates or anything, I'm like blah, 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 blah. But yeah, so I will record us putting the boat in the water of the trailer Ooh. Which for all the slack we copped on TikTok from people saying oh, you're gonna have to like submerge your car to get that in the water We'll show you why it works <laughs> Shane was just saying that last time he forgot to open up the rooftop tent to then get the boat off The whole idea of this
probably would have been that bit easier if you just had that downward roller on. Yeah. And as we can see, the car is not underwater to do this. Yeah, if it's a steeper, a steeper ramp, you would, it would definitely be easier. But, I don't, I don't think that's... It's definitely not unachievable. No. And to have yeah, this, I think that's a good sacrifice. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, that was easy, like for you to do even on your own. Yeah. Okay. So basically like that little front roller, if you can see it there, is designed so that we can put the hand winch under and really pull the pressure down. So, oh, that is the wrong way. Thanks for watching. This concludes our off-road boat camper trailer build series. We are now officially utilising the trailer on the road doing the big lap of Australia. If you'd like to see what we're up to daily, give us a follow on Instagram or TikTok. Our next series on YouTube though will be when Shane rebuilt our Toyota 5L engine. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. However, it won't be long until we are releasing vlogs of life on the road. So if that is the kind of content you're after, may as well give us a subscribe and it'll be out soon. Thanks team, see you next week.